Hello, bits for you. This is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk here. You might notice the background is looking a little bit different. Um, I'm going to hopefully be setting up an indoor 3D printing station, which will be fully ventilated and everything, which I'll be hopefully doing a video on that in the future. But in the meantime, this is a little video on showing you some little simple bases using some 3D printed parts from Epic Basing. So this is in no way sponsored anything like that. I actually purchased these items myself, but I thought I'd share them them with you guys in this video. Um, so I'm only going to do a few simple bases. There's some really amazing bases that you can make with these and um, I'll put some links to their social media down below as well because they have some really awesome examples. But I'm going to show you some ones that I'm going to make um, for my Dark Angels. So I'm doing some Dark Angels for Horus Heresy. I thought I'd make the bases a little bit more interesting than just putting down some texture paint and some grass tufts as I tend to do quite a lot. So yeah, what make them a little bit more interesting. They're not gonna be over the top or anything like that. And yeah, I'll show you what you can do with just a couple of their sets together. So yeah, let's um, hit the computer before we hit the desk and I will show you their website and what I'm gonna purchase and print. Okay, so this is the Epic Basin website and I'm gonna go straight into the shop. So. I'm going to go to the STLs, because I'm going to print these myself, but it's nice to know that they do offer the printed versions too. You can see you can sort um, how many you have per row. Um, it would be nice to be able to have more items per page. We only have 10, um, but they have quite a lot. Um, yeah, it would be nice also if they had like categories for stuff. So what I'm thinking is getting some of these like basin stones. So have these on the base and then 9.95 so $9.95 seems a lot for an STL but you know I can use it as much as I want um, so I'm not really too fussed um, I'll probably buy about four or five things and you know I can print an unlimited amount so yeah I'm not going to worry too much um, there's some nice fans or sort of fan looking plants I quite like them Again, there's pages to look through. It'd be, again, like it would be nice if there's categories for rocks, categories for trees, categories for flowers, you know, things like that to make it a little bit easier to navigate. Um, I think they do little animals and stuff as well. You see those little rabbits. Uh, yeah, these are more like fern looking. Yeah, definitely um, pick these up. So the idea is to have some sort of like big sort of fern leaf type thing. And then maybe some little flowers, as well as the base rocks as well. There's these little ground cover ones, they look quite small. So I might come back to them maybe. There's these types of basin rocks as well, so I might pick them up as well, just to give us a bit of variety. And we'll obviously only get a few designs with each STL bundle. So you can see there's quite a good variety of stuff. There's some like some sort of sea rocks and stuff as well. I've got some walls on the end there. Um, so that's sort of everything. Like pumpkins as well. Um, so yeah, really good selection. Obviously they're always expanding as well. So I think I'm going to go with these. These are quite cool. There's little clumps. You have little individual ones as well. So yeah, I think I'll pick them up also. So I've downloaded them all now and I'm going to stick them in the slicing software and I'm going to print them on the Saturn 2. Now these ones here um, are huge so yeah probably too big for what I need but I'm going to print everything out anyway. Um, you see they look pretty large. So I'll go get everything else. I should be able to fit everything on this build plate. There we go. So what's nice you can get the individual ones unsupported and you can get them all on little pre-supported sprues which is what I've done here. You can see I've got loads on the satin build, build plate. So there should be plenty here to base several miniatures. So let's fire up the satin too and play the waiting game. And as if by magic here they all are on the build play and it doesn't look like we have any failures either which is really nice. Um, I'm getting a lot of success with the Saturn 2 and here they are 
all washed and ready to be cured. So we'll take them to the desk and we'll start adding them to some bases. Okay, so welcome to the desk. So everything is all cured and I cured it on the supports. It's not something I do very often, but I thought with all these tiny little pieces, that's what I'm going to do. They're on these nice little sprues that they came pre-supported on. Um, everything's just here, a bit of a mess. You'll notice some things um, have already been used, some things have been off the sprue because I've already made some little tester bases. Um, so yeah, what I'll do, I mean each base I'm going to start with some of these slabs. So I've got a couple of different designs, different sizes. So I've got three 32mm bases and a 40 I really like this big one actually. So um, even though they've been cured, they do come off the supports fairly easily. That's a little bit warped to that one, but um, they're so thin that they can they can bend quite easily. So uh, here we go. Got some army paint or super glue. Um, any super glue will do. I quite like this army painter one. Been using that recently. I'm gonna stick that. Oh, now I'm going to also, on this larger base, take a smaller piece, but maybe not that. I'm going to take one of this one. I'm trying to get like a similar pattern. What's this one got? Yeah, this one's probably a similar pattern, so I'm going to take one of these ones. Okay. I'll just take one of them. And then that can just sort of go there, like so. Do it like that. And for the others, these ones they sort of curve, they have this curve slightly on them which fits nicely with the base. It's almost as if they're designed just for this purpose, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, well done, my pick base. And for that, we'll take a large one as well, so that takes up like half the base there. take one of these designs so yeah I know it's like two different type of brick patterns but that doesn't bother me I quite like them both equally so I couldn't really choose which one to use so I'm just using them both and then let's take one of these I'm gonna break this one up so I'm gonna get my trusty clippers Let's see if I can go along that seam a little bit. Not going all the way through to begin with, and then yeah, there we go. So that can then give us another piece there. Of course, you don't have to use them exactly how they are. You can cut them up and whatnot. We'll have that bit. On there, you have to be mindful of where you, where the feet of your miniature are going to go, of course. So having these bits mean I could stand them across there if I so wish, quite easily. It's normally a good idea actually to have a marine or something nearby. Oh, uh, well, that's a little mark, free fellow. So yeah, it's, you know, you can see you can go on there. We could go on there like that. With this one, however, it's a bit different. So you could maybe go like that, you know, easy enough. Um, some miniatures do come with a, their own little rocks on bases and that, so you could replace the rocks from their base with like stuff from this, which I might do with one of the characters. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah, that's fine, how that is. So these are all stuck down, so the next thing is to add some plants. Now I haven't got a huge variety of plants really, um, but that's okay. I do like these little ferns. So these I'm actually gonna cut off as supports rather than pull them, just because there's a few little delicate bits you don't really want to break. So it's better to cut them off, really. Um, yeah, it's a little clump of two, which I quite like. And let's get my knife just to cut off some support bits. Maybe put that one there. I like putting them on like the edge of the base. Obviously, you don't really want them in the middle, because that will just get in the way of your miniature, so... Be mindful of where your miniature's going to go. These could end up being behind or in front of one. 
um, I'm not really fussed either way. Nice to have them off at the side, really, but it's not always possible, depending on your laid out face. And then we've got these little flowers as well. So, Epic do release some really cool little videos giving you advice and tips on how to do your bases. And one thing they did recently say about um, not just having little bits scattered about in like little triangles or things like that. Normally, vegetation grows in clumps. So, I'm going to follow that advice and stick these flowers near the ferns if I don't drop them on the floor first, of course, which is exactly what I've done. Uh, we'll just cut another one off. Uh, again, we're just cutting them off the thingy. Little supports. Give them a little clean up. Um, obviously, be careful when you do this um, resin dust and all that. And yeah, I'm gonna stick these flowers right underneath the fern, like so. And uh, get a pair of these if you haven't got one. These little tweezer things, or just any tweezers will do. But these I found are fantastic. I don't know if this one wants to stand up very well. Uh... There we go. I'll stick that over to one side to dry while I do the other ones. Well, that's a nice larger clump of flowers here if I don't drop them as well. Everything's just flying on the floor. And just cutting them off. Um, they will come off the supports very easily. This is quite a large little clump. I quite like this. So, yeah, as you'd have seen earlier on as well with these ones, these are just far too big, I think. Um, might use for a smaller one in there. These would be quite good for like maybe dreadnought bases or something like that, I don't know. I should have just scaled them down, but on the pre-supports, um, if you have anything pre-supported and you want it smaller, I do recommend not scaling down for pre-supported versions, because then you end up with really tiny supports and they might not work. Um, I really like this little clump of flowers there, we're going to put that on this larger base. So this larger base will be for that Terminator miniature or character or something for my Dark Angels. So yeah, all these bases are going to be for my pre-Heresy or Horus Heresy Dark Angels. I've been doing a lot of Sons of Horus, but I wanted to have some good guys as well. So I want my Dark Angels. Um, some people will argue they're not good guys, but I like the Dark Angels. They're meant to be the good guys, right? So yeah, I'll get the rest of the plants on these and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so here's how the bases are looking now. So yeah, it's a little variety of flowers. I don't really like the single ferns on their own, they were too sort of upright. Um, so I don't really use them very often. Um, I don't use them at all really on these ones. So I've got a little group there. Um, this one seems a little bit better, so what I'm going to do is take a skull from the trusty skulls pack from GW. I'm going to add that onto this base because there's not a lot on there at the moment. So I'll just file down a little bit on the top. And then with some plastic glue this time, I'll just stick that off to the side. There, so yeah, of course, there's all manner of things you can put on bases and skulls. Why not? So they're looking good. Of course, we need some dirt. Let's put this box out of the way, and yeah, I'll get some basin material. I'm just going to use Citadel texture paints here. I've got some Stalin mud and some Stalin battle mire, and I'm just going to stick some of that on here. And this, I like how that stone's sort of sticking up a little bit. 
that's warts lately, so let's pack in some battle mire there. That's sort of a thicker stuff. And I'm just gonna use a mixture of the two so we get like a variety of thicknesses. And I'm filming this quite late at night, which is good because I can give these overnight to dry. And what you want to do as well, using these with these stones, a little bit of overlap, like so. And I'll use some thinner stuff around the skull. A little bit of overlap will help sell it a bit more. But you do need to build it up quite thickly around there. So yeah, I'm going to fill them up with the texture paints, I'll leave them to dry overnight and I'll be ready for painting. So these bases have been primed with a black primer. I'm going to start by taking some Doom Build Brown to paint the texture paint. Then I'm going to take some hog Hobgrot Hide for this stone. So I was debating between grey and a sandy colour, so I went with the sandy colour, and I apologise I'm about out of shot for this one. Then once it's all dry, I give it a good wash of Agrax, and then a dry brush with the Hobgrot Hide, and then another dry brush, this time with Screaming Skull, and this is just more catching the edges and the texture. Then I take some uh, warpstone glow for the leaves and I will eventually highlight them with mute green and then just some various different colours for the flowers so I really like this warlord purple from Vallejo I use it quite a lot so make some flowers with that I think I'll do some purple and then some with white and then it's just a case of painting the base rim and putting them on the miniatures and here we have some of my Dark Angels miniatures with these basin elements used on the bases. So these aren't the exact same ones I was painting in the video and these ones are some that I made earlier and um, but they look really cool on these Dark Angels so yeah just makes them a little bit more interesting adds a little bit more colour without really taking the eye away from the miniatures too much which is um, that's one thing I was a bit worried about because they have a special colour down there but um I think there's enough little accents of red and stuff in these miniatures just to draw the eye away from the base. But yeah, the bases are a bit more interesting than just some texture paint and grass tufts as I usually do. And yeah, I'm really liking these. I'll certainly print out a load more. Um, obviously it's more work, so if we're doing a whole army um, it's going to be fun, but I don't intend to do a huge army of these. And yeah, I think um, all together they're going to look pretty cool. Um, yeah, very different to what I normally do. So if you like this video then please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Just a quick little simple video this one, but um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it nonetheless and hopefully just gives you a little look at what Epic Basin has to offer and maybe you'll be interested in purchasing some for your army and trying them out. And you could probably come up with much better combinations than I have here. So all I've left to say is thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.